<laughs> Meet Wilfred and Julio, two professional footballers in the United States. Now look, I get it. People have all kinds of things to say about the sport in the US, but the reality is each year, millions of kids grow up with the dream of becoming a professional footballer when they're older. And how do I know this? Because I was one of them. I may not have made it, but the passion still remained. Now I ask them all the questions you want to know. Welcome to the truth about US professional football. come in trying to act like a douche, you're definitely not going to get any respect from anyone. I don't care how good you are. Uh, what's up, y'all? My name is Julio Cervantes, number 27 for the Oakland Roots. Born in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Uh, raised in Oakland, California. I guess my career started back at the University of Pacific, uh, D1 college in Stockton. Made it to a playoff bound and, uh, and everything. Lost to Stanford. Fortunately, I didn't get drafted and still continued my path, still continued to persevere. Uh, worked hard and, and got the opportunity to, to play uh, pro soccer here at Oakland Roots. It's a dream come true. I don't only do it for myself, but I do it for the, for the youth in Oakland as well. What's up guys, uh, my name is Wilfred Williams, number three for the Oakland Roots. I've done my defender playing career. I started at, at um, FC Dallas Academy, played uh, two, two years with the Academy, U16s, U18s. Had the opportunity to play with the reserves and train with the first team as well. Went off to college, University of Memphis. I transferred to a junior college. I got drafted there with uh, Sporting KC in 2018. Very rough year for me, had some injuries. So I was let go and I couldn't find teams that year. Ended up playing PDL that year with Des Moines Menace. And then the following year, I had the opportunity to sign with Orlando City B. Now I'm at Oakland, uh, I'm at Oakland Roots. And so it's been, it's been quite the journey. One thing I'm really interested in is, how did you guys get noticed by Oakland? What was the process like of signing to that team? I think um, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on everything happens for a reason, right? Back at the university I once attended, Coach Jordan Farrell was the assistant coach there. So we have a little connection there. But even then, you know, it, it, it was all up to me and Benno, our president, uh, I once played with him actually down in San Francisco and he, he called me and he said, hey, we're thinking about making a team here in Oakland and I want you to be a part of it. And um, I was truly blessed, but also everything, you know, it was due to hard work. So that's how I got, I got to Oakland Roots. Uh, my story's a little different for me. <laughs> um, for me, uh, coming from a year like I had at Orlando City, it was not the, the best yet. Had a lot of injuries. Unfortunately, I was only able to play, uh, be a part of eight games out of 28. Like he said, everything really does happen for a reason. The assistant coach here, Dario, I played with him when I was at Des Moines Minutes. And so he reached out to me, asked me if I would like to join the Roots. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to move from the East Coast to the West Coast, but um, I knew that my options was very limited and uh, it's been great. It's been great um, since moving here. The fact that they gave me the opportunity when a lot of doors were closed because of uh, the injuries that I had last year. When you go through a year that I had, it's really difficult for you to get a team. And because uh, I, I know a lot of I know a lot of people that don't have a team right now. And um, I'm just very blessed and very lucky that I have the opportunity to play to play again and to have a job. One question that came up that I thought was really interesting was kind of how your perspective about football changed over time? That's a, that's a really good question. Uh, as a kid, you know, you always, you always just play to have fun and, and don't really worry about much. As I grew older, I, I realized how much more there is than just playing, right? Um, it's fan engagement, it's more responsibility and quote unquote more politics. It deminimizes the, the fun and the passion of, of football but it's all intrinsic, right? You always have to be motivated, you always have to be inspired, and you always have to find that spark and that passion and that fun to always continue and keep pushing forward. And like many greats and many legends have said, once that is, once that is no longer in the picture, then what are you really doing, right? So it, it, it does change a little bit throughout time, but I guess that's just the way life goes sometimes, yeah? I mean, like growing up, cause like I grew up in Africa, um, you know, moving, from, from Liberia to Ivory Coast to Ghana. Like football there is just, it's just so much fun, right? You walk down the street, you see, you see, a, group of, you see a group of people playing in the streets. 
For me, when I was growing up, all I wanted to do was become a professional, professional footballer. I started to see how more competitive, how the passion is still there, but it's more, it's more of a business. For example, like if you get drafted, right? If you get drafted, you go to a, you go to a team, and you get injured that first that first week or that second week during preseason, you're done. Players will go in even if they're injured, they will they they probably won't show it. For me, that was my case. Um, I got injured, and um, I had I was taking multiple painkillers just to get through just to get through um, some games because because if I if I showed that I was injured and I knew I knew my time would have been up. Yeah. So I guess speaking to that, then, you know, how do you guys motivate yourself to get up and do this every single day? You know, being raised in Oakland, uh, you have that mindset that you have to just keep going, keep pushing yourself and never stop. So I think that's just built within me now. You know, it's it, every morning I, I wake up and I have the best job. You know, I get to go train with my boys. I get to go have fun, play play the game of football. Every time I wake up, you know, I give my blessings, I give my praises and my thanks. And, and then I just think to myself of, of the amazing opportunity that I have right now and the opportunity that others want uh, because at the end of the day, they want to be in our position. You always want to, to do your best job, right? Whether, whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch, you always have to do uh, what you're meant to do. And for us right now, that's waking up and going to train and, and, and kicking the soccer ball for sure. I mean, if, you, if, if you're not having fun with this sport anymore or just anything you're doing in general, if you're not, if you're not having fun with it, then it's not, it's, it's not meant for you to, you, like you're not meant to do it anymore. I told myself the moment that the, the day I stop having fun will be the day I retire from football. I play the game because I want to bring smiles to people's faces. I play the game because I want to I wanna bring glory to my, to my family's name. And so that's what motivates me every day, to wake up in the morning, to do, to do the extra work that most people wouldn't do. Like Kobe, Jordan, all of them, they, they all have their why and it's more than themselves. And so I think, I, think that's the, I think that's the reason that keeps us motivated, keeps us drive, driven every day to wake up and go in and put in the hours. My why is like my family. That's what, that's what wakes me up. That's what drives me every day to do what I love to do. I think every single time, you know, when you have someone make it to such a high level, their mindset is always extremely valuable and something that probably takes, you know, years to put together. So it's cool to hear a little bit about what motivates you guys to, to be where you are today. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about fan interaction. How cool is it playing in front of loads of people? And then what sort of things do you do for fan interaction? Uh, no, I mean, it's amazing for sure. Um, every game we've had has been sold out. We've had over 5,500 people come out, which is really awesome. You know, uh, being raised in Oakland is, like I said, you know, I can't stop saying it enough. It's a dream come true. And, and then just to have people I grew up with uh, and friends and family all in the stands just cheering my name, uh, it's, you know, it's an unbelievable feeling. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's an awesome feeling for sure. We usually engage with them after the game. Uh, you know, during the game and, and obviously before the game, we're, we're in the zone and we're trying to, you know, get the job done. But after, you know, we all, all our time is, is with them. We, we go, we sign their shirts, take pictures. We have a little, you know, small talk and everything is all smiles and laughter, which is amazing, right? It's like a euph euphoria, you know, it's like sometimes you don't even want to like exit from that because it's so nice. Uh, you know, once we're on the, we're back on the bus, we're, I'm just like thinking back on like everything that was happening, you know, it's like so nice, you know, shout out to the best fans in, in, the, in the league, which is uh, Oakland Roots fans for sure. I mean, just from the moment, like the moment I got here, like the love, the love that they've shown me um, was just unbelievable, right? For, for a player like me, like Oakland is different. <laughs> Their energy is different. You you come here like the pride that they have for their city and their club. It's just it's just different. It's like that's the kind of football that's like that's really missing in the United States. And uh, and I've I've never been a part of something like this before. And so it's amazing to be a part of it. You've said that you know you think you have the ability to take over the city. Do you think that if the MLS was to 
worthwhile or soccer in the US was to implement promotion or relegation. Do you think that would be a good idea for building the game overall? Ultimately, I think that's a good way to just always be competitive. I think it, it pushes certain teams to, to win and, and one day get promoted. I don't see it happening. I don't know why, but uh, that's just my take on it. it. There is a lot of stuff that would have to happen and I've heard that it is relatively unlikely. All right, switching gears a little bit. Who's the best player you've ever played against? You know, I, I'm a striker, I'm a, I'm a winger, so there's two players that come into my mind off like on top of my head. One is Josh, my boy Josh Smith, uh, and then my, my, my other boy, uh, Tristan Blackman, uh, plays for LAFC right now. Played all, all four years at uh, University of the Pacific. He's so natural, and he's, he's really gifted, you know, physically. Probably when I was at FC Dallas, I was training with the first team, and uh, it was against Fabian Castile. This guy's probably this guy's probably the fastest player I've ever 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 had to had to defend. Unreal with the body sh uh, shakes and like he would drop you so fast and he would just drag that ball and he's gone. And another player is really difficult to play against. Uh, the homie uh, Kellen Acosta, naturally left foot right foot. You just never know what's going to happen. He can ping a ball. Yeah, those are the two players really that comes to mind. How about flipping it to the other side? If you guys could choose any footballer in the world to play with, who would you choose and why? Uh, I'm thinking of a midfielder. I would say Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, why not? You know, he, he dishes the ball to, to almost everybody and, you know, Aguero and, and everybody on the front line is, is feeding off of those passes. So, but also, you know, of course, why wouldn't you want to play, you know, with, with Messi? Iniesta, you know, also, I'm just thinking a lot of midfielders, you know, uh, people who can distribute the ball to me and so I can try to get some goals for sure. Sorry, Messi is scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Messi is scoring, he's not passing. <laughs> Definitely want to play with TT, um, Terry Henry. It's the reason why I started playing football. I used to be, I used to be a winger and then U14, youth national team coaches started playing as a left back and so yeah, it's just stuck there. But like TT was just, he's the reason why I fell in love with football. He's the reason why I love Arsenal. I'm still an Arsenal diehard fan. And um, he likes being in fourth place. And listen, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still an Arsenal fan from the glory days. I, I try, I try to remember the glory days. I'm a big Arsenal fan as hey, well. Hey, look at that. Watch. Let's move on to some of you guys' best moments. I want to hear, like, what's one memory that stands out that you'd say is, like, your best football moment in your career? We were just talking about this earlier. I think uh, for me as well would be, like, just making the professional debut here in Oakland. As I mentioned before, you know, I had all my family in the stands, all my childhood friends on the stands, and, and, and to able to be on that pitch and them screaming my name and, and cheering me on is just, it, it, you know, it's an unbelievable feeling uh, that, that I will never forget. That was just the best, the best moment in my career for sure, just to make my debut here in Oakland in my backyard in my hometown. For sure, I mean, for sure making your debut, I think that's every footballer's dream. It's making that making that final step. Not only was I making my debut, but was, I was making my first start as well. I will never forget that date, April 14th. That moment, like the, the weather was perfect. Everything was just perfect. You know, the grass was just well cut. I mean, everything was just, everything was just great. You know, your debut is obviously at the, the early part of your, your time on the team. Um, is it difficult to gain the respect of your teammates at the start? And if so, how did you guys go about doing that? I think my approach has always been like genuine and, and I've always been myself regardless of what other people think or wherever I am. Uh, I try not to take it as personal when people don't really understand the way I talk, where I come from, the way I dress. And in regards to my teammates, I think our locker room are all like good people, like all our teammates are like nice and, and competitive. Was it difficult? I think um, the first couple of weeks, I mean, everybody is relatively new, but at the same time, you know, as a, as a footballer, you, you have to recognize each and everybody's talents uh, and, and where they come from and, and why they're here and what are they trying to do, right? But at the same time, as people, as human beings, we have to be kind to each other and we have to show some some level of compassion right we can't just like 
put somebody out on the corner and not talk to them or like, you know, whatever the case might be. So I don't think it was extremely difficult to gain respect just because everybody is on the same page, is on the same boat. I think like in football, it's all about earning respect, honestly. You can come in thinking like, just because you were, you were big time in the academy or somewhere else because you were young there, you can come into a new club thinking that like, it's gonna be the same thing, having that, that, big, that big head thinking that you're better than everybody. Even if you are be, um, better than anybody, you, you, can't, you can't come in with that, with that mentality. So you, you decide that, hey, I'm gonna work hard and make sure I earn my way into this club. You will definitely earn people respect within the first, within the first two days. First impression is everything. Let's say you're having a down couple games. What's one thing you do to uh, you know, keep yourself going when your form's off? Um, I think it's important to just take deep breaths once our body is a little bit more calm, then you know that means our mind is a little bit more calm. And you know, I think it's important to, to go back to the basics, go back to, to be, being more simple. You know, simplicity can go a long way as well. And not trying to do too much, you know, get that pass correct. You know, uh, hitting the ball at the right spot so it can travel how you want it. You know, and be confident and talk to yourself. You know, and say, you know, I got this. I talk to myself all the time. I think it's important that you're always communicating with yourself because sometimes uh, in this road, in this journey that, that we travel, it can seem lonely. Uh, and sometimes all you, all you really have is, is yourself. What's that one saying? Hard work beats talent when... Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I mean, you're, 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 ne you're never gonna have a perfect day, always. Sometimes you're not really in control of that. You know, like there are a lot of things that you can't control. You cannot control the surface of the field. You can't control the temperature of like what's happening. Like there's a lot of things you can't control, but the only thing you can really control is like how hard you work. And so for me, like when I know my passing is not, it's not going well that day, or I, I can't do anything skilled wise, I make sure that, you know, my hard work is not turned off. When that, when that's never turned off, guys would never notice if you're, if you're having a rough day or not. But if you're the one screwing up, and you don't work hard to get the ball back, oh, you're definitely gonna hear it. You're definitely gonna hear it. Throughout this interview, you guys have been talking about how there are loads of guys who you know want to be in your position. What is one thing that you would tell the kids who are growing up, who dream of becoming professional footballers? Continue to be themselves, work hard, be coachable, take any little opportunity to become better. What I mean by that is taking care of your, your, your health, taking care of your, you know, your mind, taking care of your body, but also, you know, taking care of those around you as well. You know, if you're always doing positive things, positive acts, then all of that, you know, is, is good karma and then all of that is gonna come back to you. It's not, it's not easy, it's not an easy road. There's thousands, if not millions of kids who, 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 who dream of becoming a footballer. Make sure that, that you're just constantly just improving and, and working hard towards your goal. That can be as, as simple as, you know, scoring 10, 10, 15, 20 goals a season to like, I want to move on to a better club, you know? So I think always being goal oriented and always keeping the plan. So that's what I would say. It's, it's always funny, work hard. <laughs> but in, if, if you really look at it, it's like, what is working hard, right? Because I mean, I know a lot, I know a lot of footballers that work harder than I did and they did not make it. I think the thing that separated them and I is that I was just blessed and lucky to be somewhere at the right time. Somebody seen something in me that they believe they're like, hey, we like you. We like you besides the football, besides the way you play football. We like, we like you as a person. If somebody has to tell you to work hard, then you're never gonna be successful. For me, the reason why I'm here is because I was able to put myself out there because I could have worked hard and nobody could have seen it, right? A lot, of, a lot of kids work hard all over, the, all over Oakland here. But I think the reason that separated probably him and, and I is we actually put ourselves out there. We were, uh, we were involved within the community. We were involved doing stuff more than football and people recognize that.
if I had a really terrible attitude and terrible character, I definitely would not be here at Oakland. Um, I definitely would not have gone uh, gotten drafted because when you, before you get drafted, there's, there's a lot of things like you know people want to know. Hey, is he a good person? Can he get along with other people? Pray for an opportunity and just be ready for your opportunity because you just never know. And nowadays, I mean, there's so many ways you can get yourself out there. Social media is huge. Putting clips of yourself on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Coaches are, there are like so many scouts that go on Instagram now or, or YouTube and just try to find players. How are people gonna see what your talent if, if, they, if you just sit in your backyard and you just work hard? Yeah, I think I mean I think I think a big part of it is like, you know, you gotta put yourself in a place to succeed on top of just yeah. being good. So I, I do think yeah. that's a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah. 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 So like I mean it's it's great to work hard for sure. Because I mean without his hard work, I mean he wouldn't be here. And being consistent as well. Being consistent is huge. That th that's the reason why a lot of people don't stay stay playing professionally, because the consistency is not there. Uh, for us, if we want, if I want to continue to play next year, I damn well needs to have. A, I need to be consistent this year. Whenever we get back to playing again, if I if if I want to if I want to keep this career thing going, because for me, I know that I'm a defender. There are people working harder to get my job next year, because none of none of this is promising. Because if I don't perform this year, who knows? My career my my career might be over. What is the most meaningful part about you know being a professional athlete? in your hometown? Um, I mean, I grew up not having anything, you know? I grew up having less than some of my friends, and, and that's always been the case. I grew up in some, in some uh, tough parts in Oakland. It was always used to be, you know, either, you know, gang violence or, or shootings and, and, you know, just, I'm, I was always constantly around that. And when I used to play as a kid with, with some of my friends and other, other clubs, you know, they never experienced anything like that. They, they always had, you know, the, the fancier cleats and, and whatever, you know. Uh, and I was just some kid from, from, the, from the hood, you know, from the block. I think that, you know, I, I always say that pride, you know, with pride because uh, I never forget where I come from. Uh, it's made me who I am. And I think the most, you know, precious thing about it all is that I get to say, I get to say all of that, you know, not a lot of people get to say that, that they really came from the bottom, you know, I really came from the bottom. I came from, from the streets of Oakland where, you know, a, a lot of my, a lot of my childhood friends always dreamt of like becoming a professional soccer player and, you know, uh, playing with them. They were, they were really good footballers, you know, I, I never take that away from them, but uh, growing up in Oakland was never easy, so they had to go a different route, you know, to provide for their family or, you know, just to get by sometimes. Um, <clears throat> all those childhood friends, you know, see, you know, we grew up together and, and now, you know, they get to see me become a, a professional soccer player and, and they get to see me uh, on TV and they get to see me on the field and, you know, they constantly tell me, like, you know, you, you really made it from the bottom, you really... You really uh, stuck with soccer, you know? You really uh, put your mind to it. You really grinded it out, and, and here you are. So, you know, we, we congratulate you, but we respect you more than anything, Julio. So I think that's the most meaningful part is just creating that inspiration and that motivation for other, other folks in, in, in our community. Because, you know, it, it, it is some, some tough times in, in, in our community, and, and not everyone gets to say they're a professional soccer player where you know, especially where we come from. So I'm just trying to build that bridge and, and, and that gateway to, to inspire other, other kids like how I was to, to reach their dreams and to, to fight for whatever it is that they want to be because it's all doable, it's all possible. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I like to always tell them that nothing's impossible. So that's the most meaningful part of it all for me. Thank you all so much for watching to this video. I hope you guys learned a lot about U.S. professional soccer. I know I did, and I want to give a big shout out to Julio and Wilford for their incredible answers. I also want to give a shout out to Alfonso and the Oakland Roots for helping make this project happen. I know this video was on the longer side. If you guys made it to the end, I want to reward you with a little something cool. It is a giveaway on a leather brand new pair of Adidas Ace 16.1s. To enter, just subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and comment something about US soccer down below. 
Make sure to include your Instagram handle at the end as I'll be announcing the winner in two weeks time through my Instagram at Luke Gare. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.